Hi everyone, I'm Sonny. Today, we'll delve into the perplexing case of a 16-year-old girl who vanished without a trace. Freya Holm stepped out of the cafe where she worked weekends, and from that moment, her life took a dark turn. Disturbing clues began to surface, hinting at something truly awful. This case quickly became Sweden's top news story, mobilizing over a thousand people for the largest search operation in the country's history. As investigators pieced together the puzzle, they uncovered a grim truth that left everyone stunned. How could such a tragedy have happened? Let's rewind to Freya's background. Freya Holm was born on February 7, 1999, in the serene Swedish town of Hu. It was a place of quietude and peace, where she lived with her parents and older sister. Freja stood out for her kindness, positivity, and determination. Even before finishing school, she had her sights set on Australia in a career in architecture. Freya's adventurous spirit led her to explore other countries alongside her parents. At 16, Freya landed her first serious job at a cafe, located a 40-minute drive from her home. Initially, her parents drove her there, but soon her father gifted her a scooter. With a license for this mode of transport, Freya relished the independence it offered. However, during those initial weeks, her father accompanied her in his car. Freya had minimal experience driving on the roads. Her work at the cafe was limited to weekends, and her father dutifully accompanied her every morning and evening. However, everything changed on June 7th, when he finally allowed her to drive to work alone. Around lunchtime, Freya's parents decided to visit her at the bustling cafe. Amid the crowd, Freya was engrossed in her duties taking a brief break for lunch and sharing a snack with her parents. At 6.23 p.m., Freya sent her father a text, informing him that she was leaving work. But just three minutes later, he received an unexpected call from her. When he answered, no one spoke on the other end. Faint voices murmured in the background, leading him to believe that Freya had accidentally dialed his number while conversing with her colleagues. He even heard the distinct sound of a car door slamming shut. Calling out her name repeatedly, he received no response before finally ending the call. Growing increasingly worried, an hour passed without any sign of Freja. She should have arrived home by now. Concerned for her safety, her father considered the possibility of an accident. It was her first time riding the scooter alone, and he feared the worst. Despite calling her multiple times, Freya's phone remained off. Desperate, her father hit the road, hoping to intercept her along the way. Knowing she would take the shortest route, uh, he drove slowly, scanning the road for any trace of his daughter. But Freya was nowhere to be found. Eventually, he arrived back at the cafe, still without any sign of her. The man's heart raced as he noticed Freya's scooter parked in front of the building. Panic surged through him. He had been unable to find his daughter throughout the entire journey. But there it was, the scooter, a beacon of hope. Perhaps she was merely delayed at work. However, as he stepped into the cafe, his relief turned to dread. The place was empty, devoid of any sign of Freya. And then he saw it. Freya's scooter keys, left in the ignition, a helmet hanging from its handle. His mind raced. Why would she abandon her scooter like this? She would never leave the keys in the ignition, not like this. Desperation drove him to call Freya's mother. Maybe she knew something. But the cafe owner, when contacted, claimed ignorance. She had spoken to her employees around 6 p.m. 
and they were closing up. No one had seen Freya. The cafe owner sprang into action. She hopped into her car, calling four friends who lived nearby. Together, they scoured the area, searching every nook and cranny. Maybe Freya had taken a bus instead of the scooter? Her mother and older sister checked the bus schedule, but Freya wasn't on any bus. As darkness settled, panic intensified. The police were called. Extensive searches began. Freya's scooter, left in the parking lot with the keys, raised chilling possibilities. Abduction? Such cases were rare in Sweden, but hope was dwindling. They needed answers, and they needed them fast. In the remote provincial area where Freja's town was nestled, the police sprang into action. Several groups, accompanied by search dogs, fanned out across the terrain. Simultaneously, officers knocked on doors of every house near the cafe, hoping for any leads. Word spread like wildfire. Freya's classmates and friends took to social media, sharing information about her disappearance, desperate to attract attention and perhaps uncover witnesses. The night wore on, but the search yielded no results. Then, on Monday morning, the police department officially announced Freya's disappearance, urging anyone with useful information to step forward. Around the same time, a man working at a barn adjacent to the cafe made a chilling discovery, a motorcycle glove lying on the floor. Detectives had previously inspected the barn on the evening of Freya's disappearance, but the glove had escaped their notice. When shown to Freya's parents, they confirmed it belonged to their daughter, further fueling the abduction theory. Additional resources were deployed, and news of Freya's vanishing spread nationwide. Hundreds of volunteers joined the search. On Tuesday, more alarming clues emerged. Volunteers scoured the area along a dirt road, a few hundred yards from the cafe. There, they found a phone case, a receipt, a ticket, and a broken smartphone screen, all unmistakably Freya's. The investigation honed in on that very spot. More fragments of the shattered phone, Freya's ID, and additional receipts were scattered along the same dirt road. The abduction of Freya sent shockwaves through the community. The police mobilized all available resources, and as each day passed, more people joined the search. Freya's case dominated headlines in Sweden, capturing the nation's attention. Hundreds of volunteers from across the country rallied to participate in the largest search operation in modern Swedish history. Among those aiding the search was a local volunteer organization specializing in finding missing persons. Their collective efforts were relentless, fueled by hope and determination. The police hotline buzzed with tips and leads, each call a potential breakthrough. One jogger's encounter stood out. She recounted an unsettling incident from the day before Freya vanished. A man, speaking English, had stopped her on the road, seeking directions to an unfamiliar city. When he insisted she get into his car to guide him using his navigator, her instincts kicked in. She declined, continuing her run. She later realized she had seen this man among the workers repairing the barn across from the cafe. Freya's colleagues also had an observation. On the day of her disappearance, they noticed two men standing across the road from the cafe, their gaze fixed on the establishment. At the time, it seemed insignificant, but in hindsight, it became a crucial detail. Then, on Wednesday morning, Freya's father and friends ventured to the dirt road where her belongings had been found. As they walked farther, they made alarming discoveries. Freya's driver's license and her house keys. The pieces of the puzzle were falling into place, but the mystery deepened. Where was Freya? What had happened to her? The search intensified, 
fueled by desperation and the unwavering hope of finding her alive. The unfolding events painted a chilling picture. Frasia, her belongings strewn along the road, taken away from the cafe. The abductor discarded her things, keys, helmet, and scooter, like breadcrumbs leading to an ominous destination. The police and volunteers focus their efforts on this path, desperate for any sign of her. But that evening, a twist occurred. A friend of Freya's father, passing by the cafe, noticed the police tape removed from the barn where Freya's glove had been found. Curiosity peaked. He stepped inside, flashlight in hand. The dim light revealed something unexpected. A pair of earrings glinting on the floor. Identical earrings lay nearby. He reported this to the police, who showed them to Freya's parents. Their confirmation sealed the connection. The jewelry belonged to their missing daughter. The barn was sealed once more, but this time, thoroughness prevailed. Forensic experts and search dogs combed every inch, and then, behind a wall, an unusual clue emerged, human feces. At first glance, it seemed unrelated, but the experts proposed an intriguing theory. When criminals commit heinous acts, adrenaline floods their bodies. Sometimes, this intense surge leads to an uncontrollable need to relieve themselves. Even killers in their darkest moments may involuntarily betray their presence. The search intensified, fueled by desperation and determination. Frazier's fate hung in the balance, and the clock ticked relentlessly. The truth lay hidden within these cryptic clues, waiting to be unraveled. As the investigation unfolded, the pieces of the puzzle began to fit together. Freye's glove and earrings discovered in the barn hinted at a grim possibility. The perpetrator might have dragged her into that very building. Detectives refused to rule out the notion that adrenaline-fueled urgency could lead to an involuntary act relieving themselves. The feces found were sent for DNA analysis, hoping to unravel the truth. On Friday, the search area expanded. Volunteers reached a farm about two miles from the cafe, a sprawling complex with several large buildings. The search team meticulously inspected each one. But then, two men arrived, speaking only English. One claimed the police had already been there, but the team leader remained skeptical. He pressed on, determined to uncover any secrets hidden within the farm's walls. As the men watched, the search continued. And then, behind the cowshed, a pile of branches concealed a chilling cache. A motorcycle helmet, jacket, and headphones, all belonging to Freja. The police descended on the scene, confirming the connection. Forensic experts combed every inch, and their attention turned to an unusual find, human feces. It seemed unrelated, but they knew better. When criminals commit heinous acts, adrenaline surges, sometimes leading to uncontrollable urges. Detectives also recalled a jogger's encounter with a suspicious English-speaking man. And they had an inkling. From the outset, they had visited every house near the cafe. In one, two Lithuanian brothers and the wife of one lived, none speaking Swedish, all communicating in English. The pieces were falling into place, but Freya's fate remained shrouded in darkness. The search persisted, fueled by determination and the desperate hope of finding her alive. Freya Holmes' disappearance and the subsequent investigation gripped Sweden, leaving an indelible mark on the nation's collective memory. On June 7, 2015, Freya Helena Holm, a 16-year-old girl from Skovda, was working at a cafe in Blomberg, near Kalbi in Västergötland, Sweden. 
she sent a text message to her father at 6.23 p.m., saying she was on her way home on her moped. However, when Freya didn't arrive, her father went to her workplace, where he found her moped with the keys still in the ignition. Concerned, he and the cafe owner searched the cafe in the nearby area, but Freya was nowhere to be found. At 9.47 p.m., they reported her missing to the police. The police initiated searches in the vicinity, including a barn with several rooms, but initially found no trace of Freya. On June 9th, the search team discovered Freya's cell phone case, receipts, tickets, and other personal items that confirmed they belonged to her. The search area was expanded, and Missing People, a volunteer organization, joined the efforts. Earrings and her license card for the moped were found, and on June 12th, Missing People searched the Martorp estate, a few kilometers from the cafe. There, they found Freja's jacket and helmet, Later that same night, Freja's body was discovered in a nearby workshed. The forensic investigation revealed that Freja had been murdered by hanging or strangulation. DNA evidence linked Lithuanian citizen Nerejus Bilovicius to the crime scene. His DNA was found on pieces of rope and ten pieces of Freja's clothing, both inside and outside the locker where her body was hidden. Bilovicius had no alibi for the day of the murder, and the motive appeared to be of a sexual nature. Despite the absence of signs of sexual assault, Freya's partially unclothed body was found with a rope around her neck and tape over her head. The news of Freya's abduction and subsequent discovery of her body dominated headlines in Sweden. The tragic case left a lasting impact on the country, highlighting the importance of justice and safety for young individuals. Freya's lifeless body lay in the car as it sped toward the farm. Along the way, the perpetrator flung her belongings out of the window, scattering them across the roadside. At the farm, hidden within the trailer locker, Freya's remains were concealed beneath a pile of old clothes. The abduction had been swift, less than an hour from the moment Freya was taken. Despite compelling evidence, the perpetrator stubbornly maintained his innocence. His wife and younger brother, lacking any incriminating evidence, were eventually released. They wasted no time swiftly departing Sweden to return to their homeland in Lithuania. As the trial loomed, the intensity grew. The accused, Nair, claimed he had toiled in that very barn for an extended period, suggesting his DNA might naturally be present there due to his work. Furthermore, he presented an alibi supported by both his wife and brother. However, Doubts lingered about the credibility of these sources in court. On the other hand, the victim's clothing bore traces of Nass's DNA. This could only be explained by direct contact with Freya on the day of the murder. The police discovered a witness who had seen Nur's car near the cafe shortly before and after Freya's abduction. The car had repeatedly traversed the road between the cafe and the farm during the same time frame when Nair was supposedly at home, asleep, according to his brother and wife. Months passed after Freya's body was found, yet experts continued their meticulous examination of all available evidence. Cutting-edge equipment revealed Nas's DNA on nearly every article of Freya's clothing, including the inside of her underwear. As the entire country followed the case, investigators persisted in their search for additional clues that could strengthen the legal case against Nair. They even traveled to Lithuania to re-interview his wife and brother. 
but the woman remained steadfast in her insistence that Nair was innocent and had not left their home. During the investigation, the spotlight shifted to Naz's younger brother. Detectives pressed him for information, revealing the mounting evidence against his sibling. The brother, cornered, finally divulged the truth. He asserted that Nas had not been at home that fateful evening. Instead, Nas returned around 7.30 p.m., covered in dirt. In a panic, he hastily tossed his soiled clothes into the washing machine. As the police questioned all the residents, Nas whispered to his brother, urging him to vouch for his presence at home during that critical time. Nas later explained that he feared being wrongfully framed due to his immigrant status and lack of an alibi during the abduction window. Initially, the younger brother staunchly believed in Nas's innocence. However, faced with the weight of the evidence, he realized otherwise. Freya's funeral occurred just a month after her tragic murder. The church, with a capacity for 130 people, overflowed with mourners. To accommodate the crowd, organizers set up benches and large screens outside, allowing everyone to participate in the ceremony. The trial commenced four months later, once again gripping the entire nation. The pressure on everyone involved was immense. No room for error existed. Nas's lawyer clung to the argument that his client's DNA might have innocently ended up on the victim's clothing due to his work in the barn. However, the prosecution dismantled this theory, especially concerning Freya's underwear. The only plausible explanation for Nas's DNA being there was direct contact with the victim. The lawyer struggled to provide any other substantial evidence supporting Nas's innocence. Desperate, he even floated the theory that the real murderer might be Nas's younger brother. During the trial, Nas's younger brother unexpectedly provided crucial information. He confessed to manipulating multiple samples of Nas's DNA and placing them on the victim's body and at the crime scene. The lawyer struggled to explain how such DNA manipulations were possible. Despite the defense's efforts, the trial lasted a month, and Nas was ultimately found guilty of murder. His sentence, life imprisonment in a high-security prison. In Sweden, even prison facilities lean toward comfort, resembling decent three-star hotels. Nas's lawyer attempted an appeal but it was swiftly rejected in early 2017. Nas himself applied for deportation, seeking transfer to a Lithuanian prison. The reasons behind this decision remained undisclosed. Lithuanian prisons, however, are notably harsher than their Swedish counterparts. Still, the court approved Nas's request, even though providing comfortable detention conditions costs Swedish taxpayers significantly. In the same year, Nas's motives became apparent. He appealed to a Lithuanian court, successfully reducing his life sentence to 15 years. Yet, this fleeting joy was short-lived. The court later overturned its decision, condemning Nas to spend his entire life in prison, albeit without the comfort of his previous Swedish cell. In August 2022, Nas faced another grim reality after being transferred to a Lithuanian prison. During a routine inmate relocation, he was viciously attacked with a shank, sustaining severe injuries that proved fatal on the way to the hospital. As for Nas's wife, her involvement remains an open question. While there is practically no chance of her direct participation in the abduction or murder, Experts would have detected her DNA on Freya's clothing or belongings if she were implicated. 